the GSLV Mark III, the third generation GSLV, inherits various technologies from its predecessors. It's very different in terms of its stages, structure, size, and has doubled the payload carrying capacity than the Mark II version. Nearly 43.5 meter tall and with a liftoff mass of 641 tons, ISRO's GSLV Mark III T2 is about to roar once again at the second launch pad at SDSC Shar. Geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark III is the heaviest launch vehicle of India. GSLV Mark III is capable of lifting up to 4 ton mass to geosynchronous transfer orbit or a 10 ton payload to low earth orbit. This vehicle is powered by two S200 solid motors, one L110 liquid core stage and a powerful liquid cryogenic stage C25. This mission is second developmental flight of GSLE Mark III and this is important mission for GSLE Mark III program as after this success of this mission, GSLE Mark III will be declared as operational and will join the group of operational vehicles PSLV and GSLV. The payload for GSLV Mark III D2 is a very advanced high throughput satellite GSAT 29, which is a multi band, multi beam communication satellite with a lift off mass of 3.4 ton. These are 29 payloads are configured to cater to the communication requirements of users from Jammu and Kashmir and northeastern regions of India. Apart from these operational requirements, the satellite would be demonstrating several new and critical technologies also. The first stage of this giant vehicle consists of two S200 boosters, which are 26.2 meters long and 3.2 meters in diameter. Each has a capacity of carrying 205 tons of solid propellant. S200 is the third largest solid rocket motor in the world. The L110 core stage carries 116 tons of earth storable liquid propellant. It is nearly 21.4 meters long and 4 meters in diameter. It employs two enhanced thrust because engines. The 13.5 meter long indigenous C25 cryogenic upper stage forms the third stage of the vehicle. It uses 28.6 tons of supercooled liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, which provides more thrust for every kilogram of propellant burned compared to conventional liquid propellants. On top of the third stage is the spacecraft in the 5 meter diameter payload fairing. The first successful experimental flight of GSL Mark III took place in 2014 when it carried a crew module as its payload. Both its solid and liquid propulsion stages had performed well and the vehicle was proven in the atmospheric flight regime. The first developmental flight of GSLV Mark III successfully launched India's high throughput communication satellite GSAT-19 weighing 3136 kilograms on 5th June 2017. In this GSLV Mark III D2 mission, the rocket will carry the 3423 kilogram GSAT-29 communication satellite into geosynchronous transfer orbit. GSAT-29 is a forerunner of future advanced communication satellites of INSAT and GSAT series. Its KU and CA band communication payloads are designed to mainly focus on providing high throughput connectivity to the large population of the country, including the ones in hilly and geographically inaccessible areas of Northeast and Jammu and Kashmir regions. The satellite is also a test laboratory for several new technologies. It is a three-axis stabilized geostationary satellite configured on ISRO's enhanced I3K bus. The satellite has a multi-band, multi-beam payload, which is essentially meant for demonstrating new technologies. 
the KU band payload of the spacecraft comprises transponders for northeast and for Jammu and Kashmir regions. The two overlapping spot beams, one each over northeast and Jammu and Kashmir regions, will provide connectivity between users carrying small terminals. The car band payload consists of fixed and steerable beams to serve the country, including the northeastern and Jammu and Kashmir regions. GSLV Mark III T2 vehicle will lift off with the simultaneous ignition of its S200 boosters. The ignition of the liquid core stage will be at 114 seconds into the flight. Both the boosters will burn out and separate from the vehicle at 140 seconds after liftoff. At 225 seconds, the payload fairing will separate. At 317 seconds, the liquid core stage will burn out and separate from the vehicle. Two seconds later, the C25 stage will ignite and will burn for almost 10 minutes. Subsequently, it will shut down at 965 seconds. GSAT-29 is planned to be injected into a GTO with its perigee at 190 kilometers and apogee at 35,975 kilometers. The master control facility MCF at Hassan will take over the command and control of GSAT-29 soon after its separation from GSLV Mark III D2. The satellite orbit will be raised to the finals will ignite and will burn for almost 10 minutes. Subsequently, it will shut down at 965 seconds. GSAT-29 is planned to be injected into a GTO with its perigee at 190 kilometers and apogee at 35,975 kilometers. The master control facility MCF at Hassan will take over the command and control of GSAT-29 soon after its separation from GSLV Mark III D2. The satellite orbit will be raised to the final circular geostationary orbit GSO by firing liquid apogee motor in stages. Once the satellite reaches its final orbit, the solar panels and telecommunication antennas will be deployed. With the success of this flight, the development phase of GSLV Mark III vehicle program will be completed and the vehicle's operational phase will begin. Thus, GSLV Mark III D2 will be a significant milestone towards achieving self-reliance in space activities.